<笑>茶番はいいさっさとデビル化するがいいお前を殺し全てを終わらせる Taking your uh, time, sitting with us, answering some questions, and obviously for Tekken 8, uh, a question that came to my mind is with the new feature of the heat action, was um, changing the game formula like that a concept early on, or was it a long process to find, yeah, that's the new mechanic, this aggressiveness where we want to go? Right, so uh, Nakatsu was just saying that it, it was decided pretty early on in the development cycle uh, because we knew we wanted to make it aggressive. Uh, Tekken is well known for its uh, its gameplay of you know combos, etc. But it's also about this back and forth strategy with your opponent and uh, you know trying to hit your opponent when they miss. It's when you see an opening. It's that's kind of like the the main part of it, right? So how to enhance that? And uh, we took cues from actual real martial arts or, or sports like boxing, et cetera, that uh, there's certain times where uh, you'll see one blow will change the tide of the fight, and then the person who uh, executes that then is uh, you know, pressuring their, their opponent heavy because they have the advantage. And to, to create something like that would really resonate well with the, the game concept. And so that's uh, kind of how the heat system came along. And uh, I would just say, too, that it makes it, I think it makes the characters quite unique, too, because uh, games are fun when you're very powerful, right? <laughs> but if you're powerful the whole match, it can cause problems. But since the heat is like this one window when you have the time to just, you know, uh, go ham on your opponent and that you ha you're at an advantage, but uh, putting a timer on it is what makes it balanced. So it's a it's a good uh, mix of I think making the game fair, but still making you feel powerful and, and being able to enjoy it like that. 
So I want to ask about uh, another, I guess, important fact in Tekken 8, which is uh, the tutorial sections, as I would call it, because this time there are several ways where the player gets information how to play Tekken in a more interesting and better way. Right. Um, was this intended from the start, or was this something that got like step, like step by step uh, inside of the production process? So Nakato was just saying that uh, it was decided pretty early on that we wanted to do something like this. Uh, you know, first off, up until seven, it, we realized that maybe in the game there wasn't a whole lot of resources to teach the player how to to be uh, to improve. Uh, but this time for eight, you know, we really wanted to starting with a special style, which allows you to jump in and and uh, right away kind of uh, feel directly what makes Tekken so enjoyable, uh, and to be have a larger audience uh, be able to enjoy the game in that manner. But then uh, the the play flow kind of came about that we also want to do arcade quest where it, you jump in and you have uh, you could play against AI ghosts but at the same time you have a mentor Max who kind of teaches you the ins and outs of the game uh, to kind of help ease the player in so that uh, uh, the most pe people as possible could enjoy the game and I would say Nakatsu said it quite easily but um, in Tekken we at least Harada talks about this to us a lot, that people don't really want to jump into a tutorial. Only the hardest core people will probably jump in and, and experience that. And we've seen data that people kind of skip that often, even the people who need it the most. So the idea is that you can jump right in and, and enjoy the game, uh, but at the same time, as you notice, you start to get better and better. Uh, that was kind of the core philosophy behind uh, both the special style and arcade quest as well. So, regarding the arcade quest mode, arcade quest mode, um, I realized at the end of Gong you have this uh, champion Orochi, and uh, it's a typical, yeah. Uh, Sports story, you know, the, the good one who got arrogant, and also, uh, and that's the interesting part. Has like this gatekeeping mindset of uh, the other ones are all fake. So was it important to you in also integrating in this mode, helping players along, understanding the game, also uh, getting or uh, showing an uh, or uh, trying to get the people to understand sportman, sportsmanship in the Tekken 8 community. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, he's kind of like uh, a Kazuya Mishima, right? But instead of the main story mode, this is like your story mode as a player. So uh, it really was kind of like to motivate the player that you have this really a jerk, we should say, right? <laughs> and, and you want to band together with your friends in, the, in your local arcade to... Uh, push each other further to improve yourself as a player so that eventually you could uh, beat him, uh, was the idea behind it, what he was saying. But I think it's not just Orochi, it's in general, if you play, uh, I think you guys are only allowed to play the first chapter or so, uh, but as you play more, you'll see that it's kind of linked to the community, uh, and it's got the backdrop of the TWT, so if you've been in arcades like myself and Nakatsu have, you'll recognize a lot of the stuff. Like, there's one like, oh, that guy, he always punches the machine, so we don't like him. Or little little hints like this that you probably have heard somewhere in actual real arcades. So we wanted to uh, have people who never experienced the arcade kind of get a feel for what it's like for that sense of community uh, and that sense of being being in a, a part of a local arcade. Nakatsu was also just saying that. Orochi is very uh, one-sided in the fact that he thinks it's all about winning a match. It, nothing else matters. But, you know, it's uh, it's about friends. It's about community. It's about maybe you just enjoy uh, looking at a character or customizing it or other aspects of the fighting game uh, is what he tried to wanted to pray, portray in that. And uh, that's a very good answer. I noticed even on social media a lot of people have an idea of what Tekken has to be which to, I also personally have answered that Tekken is so many things to so many different people that, uh, you know, why can't we have all of it? Just because you don't enjoy some particular area, it means someone else does. And that's what makes Tekken so cool is that we have 
uh, so much content in, uh, for a variety of different people. Whether you're, you're an esports guy who just wants to be at the top of the food chain, uh, skill-wise, or if it's you just like a particular character and want to find out what's going to happen next for them in the story, I think this game is is made for everyone. So now this, and especially the new ones like uh, Victor and uh, especially Reina. And she's still shrouded in mystery based on the trailer. We saw a little bit already in the story mode. And there was one thing in your entrance speech uh, where you said you only play, or you play Mishimas. And then you said you will play Reina. Want to elaborate on that <laughs> story-wise? <laughs> Nakatsu was just talking about how um, She's intentionally mysterious, and it's something you have to play through the story mode uh, until you figure out why she uses Mishima-style uh, fighting karate. Uh, but the one thing that makes her unique this time around is just that kind of uh, the Mishima style and her other uh, title style, and uh, her personality is is really dynamic as well. She's not; she might seem like a really bad person and like very uh, dangerous, but at the same time, uh, she has other sides to her that are going to be portrayed in the story. So please play the story. We can't tell you about her much. But uh, the reason I picked her, though, is just uh, because she uses Mishima fighting style karate. And to me, because my personal play style is focused on Mishimas, the most satisfying thing is hitting your opponent with an electric and the sound and the feeling and everything, which I hit Nakatsu with today several times. <laughs> um, and I can't go into whether she's a Mishima or not, but it, we know she has those techniques, right, that make it so satisfying. And uh, we, we have these male characters up until now, uh, Heihachi, Kazuya, to some extent Jin, that could be called Mishima style. This is the first time we ever had a female character uh, and so I just like the look and feel of her and different customization options and my favorite colors are black and purple and so it's like almost like Nakatsu tailored her for me to use for my, my main character so uh, just the play style is super fun uh, but I think people will grow to like her even more once you play through the story and see the setting uh, so like I said you know it's it's a lot to the game it's not just about uh, the gameplay mechanics it's about the setting and all that stuff as, as well So a uh, thing that has changed with uh, basically everything about gaming development also is that you can be out there on social media, people can get in contact with the community. I mean, I'm following uh, Harada-san <laughs> and at the same time, and that's, uh, that's the point I'm going for, Tekken has been around for some time now. I mean, I have uh, vivid memories of playing Tekken 3, uh, playing Tekken Ball with my uh, cousin almost every weekend. And <laughs> with other characters, we're on this beach and it's bright. And when you choose two Ogre, it's like this. <laughs> Pretty interesting. <laughs> like yeah. space. So, um, how is it for you both? Um, or do you have people reaching out and telling you stories like that? because Tekken has been a part of their life for some time now. How is it to work well, on the like that? Oh, no. it, uh, he was actually a player, like you know, just a general player be uh, before he joined the team, uh, around the time of Tekken 3. And he, like like you, played uh, Tekken Ball on the beach uh, as True Ogre. <laughs> Had some friends over, it was a great time. And uh, so he can kind of uh, experience things from a player standpoint as well. And so, uh, he really wanted to bring back Tekken Ball. Uh, Harada, he was originally against it, but uh, Nakatsu made the case and said, you have to let me make this. And uh, after he, uh, we announced that uh, we were going to have Tekken Ball, a lot of fans reached out to him about their uh, fond memories of uh, playing with their friends like you. So uh, it was great that he had the chance to be able to make it this time. I would say it is... Social media, I get a lot of uh, things like that, positive, sometimes a lot of negative stuff. But some interesting things that happen in that regard are we go to so many countries for PR like I am in now for Germany, right? And we always have to go through some kind of border control. And they say, what do you do? And I'm just, ah, I make video games. Oh, anything I know? 
Tekken. Oh, I love Tekken. I played with my brother during Tekken 3 or whatever. And so it's, it's great to, to get uh, that positivity uh, as I'm going to a new country. But sometimes they're really enthusiastic and I'm in a hurry and I'm like, I gotta go. So what I did this one time was I said, oh, you like Tekken? I'm just a producer, but you know, Harada, he's back there. He's coming here. And then I go, I, they let me go really quickly. And then Harada <laughs> gets stuck in customs as they're uh, talking about their love of Tekken. <laughs> Um, a feature I really like now that I could try it out is the Super Ghost AI, uh, especially because you can select different ranks that you already know from former Tekken uh, games, so you have an idea how, how strong the opponent will be. Um, was it very difficult to produce the AI model? What, what were the hurdles you had to overcome that this works? Well, the, this time for the AI, you know, obviously Tekken has a lot of things to keep in mind when you're playing, like uh, health and uh, distance to your opponent, uh, distance in relation to a particular wall, all these different things. So we all know that you know AI is, is becoming more and more better at doing a multitude of tasks, but it's still that humans are still better at making these kind of split second decisions in, in uh, difficult situations, right? So it, it was more about uh, trying to get the, the AI goes to, uh, if we wanted to make a very strong one, it, it would take so many matches and, and it would take uh, a long time. But Uh, the focus was more on trying to identify certain characteristics of the player's play style and to make sure that those show up in the ghost and that uh, as much as possible that the ghost can uh, reflect those as soon as possible. So sometimes even the, in the middle of a match you can see that it's learning a particular thing. And uh, that's what was uh, surprising to us at first when we saw it, uh, when the engineer showed it to us. Uh, but I think that the players will be able to enjoy and be surprised at as well when they see their ghost learning right away in the match. In the start presentation, you mentioned the photorealistic graphics as one pillar of the game as the next gen Tekken. Also, we see more and more games like having to decide between high fidelity graphics or a 60 FPS mode. And I think uh, so the technical side of things, what you can do on this next gen hardware while also delivering this fluent um, fighting game action was a um, yeah, challenge. No, Katsu was just saying it. Yes, it was very difficult because we don't have the choice. Uh, to let players decide which one they want to do. If it's a fighting game, it has to be 60 frames per second. So it really took a lot of work with uh, many of the artists and the programmers to make sure that the assets were uh, you know, made as light as possible and to, to decrease the load on the game engine as much as we could so that uh, the game still can consistently keep that 60 frames. So uh, it really was a... Uh, a lot of work uh, from a variety of different team members to achieve this, but uh, it turned out pretty well. And I would also add that, like he said, it's it's it has to be 60 frames, so uh, that's what we're limited at. And so we were, were for, forced to be creative in making the game look good. It's not just about 4K, uh, it's, you know, uh, the environment and the details, uh, or uh, the level of detail in particular costumes, or the way it stands out so that it maybe uh, makes it look really good, or the situation, the theme of a stage maybe plays well to it. Um, but also one thing I saw in the development that was quite interesting was uh, we have a HDR uh, 1000 monitor. So you know there's like 400, 1000, 600, et cetera, right? And the game looked really good when you had a, a decent HDR monitor. Even, even that itself makes those pretty graphics. So there's a lot of, When you say f pretty graphics, there's a lot of ways to go about it. And so we had to get creative since we did have that limit of 60 frames. We already asked this question, actually, but now that new information is out, and the answer could change. So what is the single most important or interesting thing for you both uh, or feature uh, in Tekken 8 that you would say this defines it? 
So for Nakats, it's it's definitely the arcade quest in the Tekken Fight Lounge because of that. Uh, you're able to jump online or in the mode to experience what, uh, kind of get a taste what arcade culture was like, even though there's not many around. And so that's like his favorite aspect of the game. Uh, for me, it's very hard to pick. Um, obviously, the graphics, like we were just talking about, you don't have to know anything about the game, but everyone, you can show them a game and, wow, does it look awesome or not? And I think we score pretty high marks there. Uh, but as far as an actual feature, um, I would say the uh, my replay and tips, just because fighting games have such a high hurdle, uh, and this easily allows you to not have to go online and search for all this information. You just play the game, uh, look at your replays, and the AI automatically tells you how to be a better player. So uh, I'm really looking forward to learning uh, char characters outside of my main just by using this mode. Thank you. Ah, no problem. Get ready for the next battle. Don't miss me winning. Round one. Fight. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.